addiction equals suffering. Now, I know this from personal experience and I know this because I've seen it in the lives of many other people. I have flunked out of seven rehabs. I've gone to prison because of drug use and drug selling and drug manufacturing. I have ruined relationships, ruined businesses, and ruined my self-esteem through drug use. So in 2020, when I relapsed again, I had to figure out why do you keep repeating this pattern? In most programs, if you're going to get over an addiction, you have to have a higher power, spirituality. A lot of the spiritual paradigms did not make sense to me. I had a lot of problems with that. You know what does make sense to me is quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and brain chemistry. It turns out that the more quantum mechanics is revealed and the power of thinking and the fact that all of our cells, every single cell is 90% open space, that's where the quantum stuff is, and the fact that we can actually change our neuroplasticity, I mean, our brains can actually change, I had hope. In fact, over the last two years since my relapse, I really studied You Are the Placebo, Making Your Mind Matter, Evolve Your Brain, and I think the most useful one was, for me was Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And that is how to reprogram our brains and our behaviors and our habits and our beliefs. I call it quantum alignment. And what I've learned about addiction, first of all, if you're wondering if you're addicted to something, yes, you are. Everybody is. And here's how I define an addiction. It is the thing we do that we can't wait to do, that we obsess about all day long, that lets us escape from whatever is bad and causing us suffering in our lives. I would make a good example where I exercise every day, but if I miss it, it's not gonna kill me. I'm not gonna stress out. I'm not going to frantically find a way. But when I was addicted to THC or um, alcohol or meth, all of the above, if somebody or something was gonna prevent me from doing it, I would go to lengthy measures to make sure that that didn't happen, that I was able to do it. When we're addicted to something, we obsess about it, we can't do without it, we get mad if anything tries to blink to separate us from it, and it actually becomes wired into our brains that life will be better when I get to do blank. For some people, it's stress eating. For some people, it's TV. For some people, it is achievement. Oh, I've been there. Also done the gambling thing. Uh, so then the sex thing was before I was married. However, I know what it feels like to be in an addictive pattern because I've been in it so many times. I also know what it feels like to identify that pattern, label it, and realize it doesn't have to continue. But it cannot be easily solved just by abstinence. And I do love the 12-step programs, but they don't work for me. I don't like going into a group saying, hey, I'm Tom, I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Tom, I'm an addict. I don't wanna reinforce the thing I don't wanna be. They deal with the actual issue of using the drug or the alcohol, but they don't deal with why, why we're doing it. What is that pattern or belief that keeps running that gives us permission or allows us to give ourselves permission to repeat the same harmful behavior again. I've realized that getting down to that root cause is how you cure all addictions. Because I have jumped from addiction to addiction to addiction. I, now I'm currently addicted to my wife's validation, soon to be my ex-wife's validation and approval. Like I feel like if she would just call me up and tell me, oh, I was wrong, I still believe in you, I see your goodness, I'm sorry I made you feel unvalued and said it's done so quickly and abruptly, I would feel better, but only for a short period of time. Approval seeking is another addiction. So to cure an addiction, work has to be done on the subconscious mind. And subconscious, quantum, spiritual, they're all kind of connected. So if you're not a spiritual person, you don't believe in God, with me, God is G-O-D, get over defining. There's a higher power, I'm not sure what it is, I don't know sure how it works exactly, but I know that it's a higher power than me. But I also know that we can tap into it. That's how quantum mechanics works. That's why prayer works. That's why spirituality works. But we can't tap into it with our conscious thinking. We have to tap into it with our unconscious. So here's the news. If you think you're addicted, you most likely are. I battled with the THC thing for years. Man, should I stop doing it? Is it messing up my life? Oh uh, yeah, but somehow I negotiated that and said, no, nah, not too bad, it's legal, it's fine. It relaxes me, makes it more fun to be around the kid. I mean, just had all these reasons. And 
Just because you can stop and not go through physiological withdrawals doesn't mean it's not an addiction. Because most likely, if you just stop cold turkey, you'll be looking for something else to fill that void. And that void is to cover up I call it your shame, pain beliefs, your shame, pain behaviors, and they become shame, pain thinking too. The pain that happened that you're ashamed about, don't even want to deal with, don't want to talk about, you definitely don't want to suffer through it, but it continues to haunt us. What I've learned is that our brain will change, but we have to, one, become aware we have those addictive patterns going, two, accept with authenticity that they're there, and three, decide you're willing to spend time letting your unconscious mind match what you wanna do consciously. So addiction sucks, and addiction inevitably causes suffering. But let me, quick disclaimer, just because you use drugs doesn't mean you're high. Just because you drink doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. It is when drugs or alcohol or food or TV or work, it's when it's used as an escape to get away from the now being, from the present reality of the present moment. When that is the case, well then you're in an addictive pattern. So my addictive patterns have hurt lots of people and right now I am feeling the suffering. However, if my journey through it and my decision to go into the pain and deal with the root cause of it can help one, I really like to help a lot more than one person, but if we can help at least one person and my pain and suffering that will lead to a different outcome, a different future, a different opportunity that I'm not even visualizing now, and that can inspire others just to get honest, get authentic, become aware, then it's worth it because I don't want this suffering, this addiction journey to be for naught. I want it to be for a reason that helps others. So though I've helped people lose weight, and get healthy and strong my entire career before I was a teacher before that, by the way, addiction messed up my teaching career as well. Though teaching and coaching fitness has been my career, I am super passionate about helping people in their suffering and attached to almost any type of suffering, there is a compulsive behavior that we don't like, we don't want to deal with, and we definitely don't want anyone to point out or talk to us about. My hope is that I can help some people as I get through it in a different way, I can help some other people do the same. It starts with awareness. Why am I doing this? I tell my food clients, my nutrition clients, that food is an F word. Sometimes we eat it for fun, for flavor, for feelings, for festivities, for friends, for family. I mean, we eat it for lots of different reasons. But just becoming aware, hey, is what I'm about to eat for fuel or is it one of the other F words? Just that awareness alone opens up the door for healing. Same thing with any other compulsive activity. Am I doing this to fuel my purpose? Am I doing this to help my cause and help others? Or am I doing this to escape? Becoming aware and becoming very authentic about your intentions is the first step. I'm Coach Tom, Tom Miller. Grateful that you watched this video and hoping it helps you and hoping that making it helps me. My big vision is I'm gonna look back to this years from now and I say, ah, I remember that day where I just had finished crying and made the video about addiction. I'm sure glad I'm not there anymore. But today that's where I am and I'm fully aware of it. See you next time.